Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, I welcome you to the lecture number 31 of the course title Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, today we will start module 11 and uh, the focus of this module and the upcoming module that is last module, module number 12 uh, will be to discuss uh, specific concepts related to eudynamic wellbeing. Uh, these are the concepts which are beyond uh, just happiness and emotional uh, uh, emotions. So, in today's lecture, uh, we will talk about uh, the concept of self-actualization uh, from the perspective of humanistic psychology. Uh, so, before we talk about today's lecture, you know, I'll just briefly, you know, uh, summarize some of the things that we have discussed in the last lecture. So, in the uh, last two modules, that is module 9 and 10, uh, we have been discussing uh, about various happiness enhancing strategies or strategies that can no, that has the potential to increase your experiences of happiness in your life and uh, we have discussed specific uh, strategies you know such as you know practicing gratitude acts of kindness using uh, signature strengths and flow experiences so in the last lecture we specifically talked about the concept of flow and how what are the characteristics and how it can be you know uh, fostered so, uh, we have discussed the concept of flow as an intense experiential you know, involvement in moment to moment activity uh, where attention is fully involved in the task at hand and the person is uh, at his or her fullest capacity in terms of functioning. Uh, and we, discuss, we have discussed that mostly uh, the, the experiences of flow which is intense involvement with the task happens mostly when uh, the under the condition of high challenge and high skill task. So, where there is a challenging task and you also have high skill, where skill is skill needs to be little bit stretched in terms of challenge. So, in those conditions flow experiences happens and uh, flow experiences mostly happens for the activities in which we are mostly intrinsically interested. Uh, we have discussed uh, various characteristics of flow uh, such as you know intense focus, loss of reflective self consciousness merging of action and awareness, distortion of temporal experiences and so on. And also we have discussed what are the various consequences of flow and uh, mostly uh, the research indicates that you know flow experiences are associated with uh, many uh, you know indicators or positive indicators of well-being and performance. And at the end we have discussed some of the interventions to foster flow experiences. So, these are some of the thing, things that we have discussed in the last lecture. Uh, today it is a new model and the focus is uh, going beyond just happiness and emotional experiences. Idea is, is to look at uh, eudynamic well-being which we have discussed in uh, one of the earlier lecture uh, uh, which talks about uh, well-being uh, beyond just emotional and transitory experiences in terms of various ideas such as self-actualization, meaning in life, etc. So, today's lecture will be devoted on the concept of self-actualization and we will try to understand self-actualization from the humanistic psychology and more specifically uh, from the theories of two important humanistic psychologies uh, that is Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. So, this will, uh, this will be the focus of today's lecture. So, the concept of uh, eudynamic well-being, uh, we have discussed a little bit about the concept of eudynamic well-being uh, in one of the earlier lecture, it is I think in the lecture number 17. So, the idea, I uh, will just uh, briefly summarize again what is the idea of eudynamic well-being. Uh, so, the idea is, is happiness uh, is, en is enough for good life, 
So for good life, happiness is very important and it is very important ingredient in terms of experiences of life. There is no doubt about particularly when we talk about happiness in terms of emotional experiences. Uh, the literature of happiness and subjective well-being seems to be concerned with mostly feeling good or in terms of experiences. Uh, however, many researchers argue that true value of well-being and quality of life cannot be just understood in terms of uh, just uh, you know emotional experiences. There should be many important other ingredients which makes life uh, a good life. Uh, should consider concepts such as meaning and purpose in life, realizing one's inner potentials and fulfillment in life, etc. So, eudynamic concept is uh, specifically about these concepts which are beyond just emotional experiences. So, in lecture 17, we have already discussed some of the basic ideas of eudynamic well-being and how it is different from uh, the concept of subjective well-being or happiness. So, according to eudynamic well-being, uh, the concepts of well-being, uh, well-being consists of more than happiness. It is uh, more about actualization of human potential. It is about fulfilling one's true nature and diamond. So, it is more in terms of functioning, in terms of long term, in terms of future oriented goals. Uh, so, well-being is conceptualized mostly in those terms. So, eudynamic well-being uh, conceptualize well-being in terms of positive functionings. Functionings plays more important here than experiences. Uh, uh, meaning in life and pursuing worthwhile goals, actualization of inner potential and so on. So, these are some of the important indicators of eudynamic well-being. So, uh, the core idea e of wellness is not how pleasant or unpleasant one feels, but how one functions in response to life challenges. So, focus is given more or emphasis is given more on functioning aspect rather than just emotional experiences. So, this is another important aspect of well-being uh, without which we cannot understand the term well-being in a holistic sense. So, in uh, Technically, in, in the literature of psychology, eudynamic well-being is called as psychological well-being. So, when the word psychological well-being is used in the literature of uh, positive psychology and specifically, uh, it, is, it connotes the idea of eudynamic well-being. Whereas, the word subjective well-being is mostly concerned with the uh, concept of you know hedonic well-being or happiness or emotional experiences. Uh, mostly in that context, the word subjective well-being is used. Psychological well-being is used mostly to connote the idea of eudynamic concepts of well-being. Carol Reef and her colleagues, um, they proposed six dimensional model of eudynamic well-being or psychological well-being, which is quite popular and many people use their model to measure eudynamic well-being. Uh, in their model, they talked about you know six important dimensions of eudynamic well-being and these uh, dimensions are uh, self-acceptance personal growth, purpose in life, positive relations with others, environmental mastery and autonomy. Uh, we have uh, discussed uh, you know, some of these ideas all, uh, in, in some of the earlier lectures. Uh, so, we will not go into uh, too much in details about all, uh, all these ideas. Some of these already we have discussed and few more we will discuss in uh, upcoming lectures. So, uh, there are many theories that conceptualize human well-being uh, in terms of eudynamic well-being. So, there are many theories that talks about eudynamic well-being. Uh, we will focus to today more on uh, theories, uh, theories of self-actualization uh, from uh, humanistic psychology. We will also talk about uh, concept of self-determination theory in the upcoming lectures, the concept of meaning and purpose and life goals. So, these other concepts will be discussed uh, in the uh, upcoming lectures, uh, uh, but today we will specifically focus on the concept of self-actualization uh, specifically from humanistic theories. So, uh, let us briefly look into uh, the basic idea of humanistic psychology, uh, uh, humanistic psychology and their idea of self-actualization. Now, humanistic psychologists, most prominent among them are uh, Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. Uh, so, and we will discuss the, uh, the uh, theories of these two particular humanistic psychologists. Uh, they were probably first eudaimonist in the 20th century, you know, 
uh, this humanistic psychology is focused a lot on this eudynomic ideas of well-being. Uh, even before the positive psychology came into the picture, there were the people who talked about uh, well-being in terms of various eudynomic concepts, particularly the concept of self-actualization was given a lot of emphasis in their theories. So, humanistic psychology emerged in 1960s uh, mostly as an opposition to pessimistic conceptualization of human nature by psychoanalysis and behaviorism. So, uh, humanistic psychology is also called as third force in psychology primarily because it emerged uh, as a uh, as a you know uh, a, as a particular you know approach of study of human beings in opposition to psychoanalysis and behaviorism. Uh, primarily because psychoanalysis is very pessimistic in terms of you know looking at human nature because the basic idea of psychoanalysis is that human behavior is governed by unconscious forces or unconscious mind which is full of lot of aggressive and se sexual instincts and human beings are mostly governed by those dark forces in the unconscious mind. So, uh, there is a sense of pessimism in terms of very deterministic idea of human nature in psychoanalysis uh, where behavior is governed by unconscious unseen forces. Behaviorism on the other hand uh, mostly focuses you know the human understanding human nature uh, in terms of understanding you know you know st uh, stimulus response reaction that human beings are mostly uh, the victims and pawns of the you know uh, environmental stimulus. So, according to whatever learning and conditioning that will happen from the environment uh, the human beings will uh, become accordingly you know their nature will be shaped accordingly. So, these two ideas uh, or approaches of human nature or study of human behavior are very uh, deterministic and to some extent pessimistic. So, as a response to these two uh, schools of thoughts, uh, humanistic psychology emerged in 1960 uh, to talk about the important positive dimensions of human behavior, which were not given emphasis at all in other schools of thoughts. So, humanistic psychology offered some new sets of approach uh, uh, and uh, to study human beings. Some of their core assumptions are uh, that people are motivated to self actualize their inner, inner hidden potential. So, one thing is that there is an inner motivation among all human beings to actualize all of their hidden potentials. You know, this motivation is there in all human beings. Uh, whether somebody uh, is able to reach there or not that is a different question, but this motivation is there among all human beings that we all want to make best use of our the life and you know uh, and uh, you know uh, floor in the best possible way. So, that is the meaning of self actualization we will talk about self actualization in detail. So, this is the in inner motivation that is present in all of us. Human beings have free will. So, this is one of the idea which is different from uh, uh, psychoanalysis and uh, uh, behaviorism who did not you know, f uh, you know accepted this idea of free will you know very clearly. So, humanistic say, uh, psychologists talked about the concept of free will that human beings have free will and they can determine their life, choose their life and shape their life for in whatever way they like. So, this uh, the concept of free will is given a lot of importance. Uh, they also talk about human being make active choices that influences their well being. So, this is connected to free will. So, we can make choices actively choose consciously choose uh, pathways in our life and make decisions which would influence our life. And another important idea of humanistic psychology is that human beings are basically good intrinsically. So, intrinsically at the core of all human beings are actually good in terms of because at the core of human beings all the positive qualities are there love uh, you know compassion all these qualities will flow when people really touch their core of human being. Uh, so, intrinsically all human beings are good in terms of you know uh, in, in terms of nature uh, because of so many other conditioning obviously, uh, in terms of behavior people may show many negative behaviors that is uh, not in conflict with this idea intrinsically at the core of core all human beings are good in nature. So, this is another idea. So, these are some of the ideas and you can very clearly see 
uh, this idea has a very important, uh, very positive assumptions of human life. That human beings have free will, they can make choices, they can determine their life, they can actualize their potential, they are basically good in nature. So, all these ideas uh, were kind of radically different from ideas of other schools of thoughts and in the, for the first time you know that talked about all these important positive qualities of human beings uh, which were neglected in other schools of thoughts. So, this is sub, uh, the brief background of humanistic psychology that emerged in 1960s and prominent among them were uh, you know Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers and many other psych psychologists. So, we will talk about uh, this uh, Maslow's theory as well as Rogers theory and we will try to understand the concept of self actualization from these two uh, theories uh, in order to understand this eudynamic idea of self actualization. So, Abraham Maslow uh, is known for giving a theory called uh, hierarchy of needs that human beings uh, he proposed that we all have a hierarchy of needs. So, there is so many needs and all these needs can be arranged in a hierarchy. So, Maslow noticed that there is a hierarchy uh, among our needs, uh, who hierarchy basically means some needs take priority over others. So, there is a hierarchy means one is at the top of others. So, for example, if uh, one is hungry and thirsty, quenching of thirst will be priority as thirst is stronger need than hunger. So, there will be more stronger needs and weaker needs we will try to fulfill stronger needs first and then we will go to the other needs which are not so strong. So, for example, when we are hungry as well as thirsty, we will try to first uh, fulfill the need, uh, need of thirst or quench the thirst because it is much more stronger need. So, like this human beings have so many needs and he kind of arrange all these needs in a hierarchy according to the their nature uh, and according to what he observed in human life. So, based on this idea, uh, Maslow created a hierarchy of needs for human life and these needs are mostly represented using a pyramidal structure. So, we will see what is this structure uh, and the lowest level of the pyramid uh, includes most basic needs. So, at the lowest level comes the most basic need and as we uh, go higher in the pyramid, uh, we have more uh, refined and complex and psychological needs. So, let me, let me draw uh, his uh, pyramidal structure of human need. So, so, at the base E are basically uh, base of the pyramid consists of physiological needs. Uh, then come safety needs then comes love and belongingness need, then comes esteem need, at the top comes self actualization need. So, he presented as a kind of pyramidal structure which is something like this. So, uh, this is uh, the uh, need hierarchy model of Maslow. So, at the foundation of this pyramidal structure when we say some uh, show something in the pyramidal structure, what is the meaning of this is that you know. So, there is a hierarchy. So, there is a foundational needs and as we go, so there is more uh, uh, needs which are less foundational. And uh, if you see in the pyramid, the base is largest. So, that means highest number of people are in those needs 
as we proceed higher needs less and less number of people will be uh, kind of uh, focusing on those needs. So, that is also another idea of pyramidal structure. So, physiological needs basically include uh, need for things such as you know uh, need for food, water, sleep etcetera. So, physiological need basically includes need for taking food, water, sleep. So, those are related to our biological survival. So, physiological needs are most fundamental because uh, these are survival needs without that we cannot survive. So, in that sense it these are these are foundational need. So, this is the most fundamental need and human beings or will 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 try to fulfill those needs at any cost because these are important for our survival. So, we will we'll first everybody tries to fulfill these basic physiological needs before fulfilling other needs. Then comes safety needs. So, once uh, the idea of hierarchy means once you fulfill uh, the base basic need then you proceed to the next need. So, once we fulfill our physiological needs uh, we try to fulfill our safety needs. So, safety needs is about you know uh, in terms of uh, you know, needs that needs to feel protected safe. Uh, it uh, includes you know uh, creating safe circumstances stability in life protection from threats etcetera. So, these are all safety needs. So, for example, you know we save money for future, we uh, we take insurances, these are all coming from the safety needs. So, that you know we have a secure uh, future life also. So, these are coming from the safety needs. So, once we fulfill safety needs, uh, we uh, proceed to or we try to fulfill the next higher need uh, which is the need for love and belongingness. Uh, this is now coming to more emotional at the and the psychological level. So, love and belongingness uh, needs include basically you know uh, things like you know, uh, you know need need to have friends, family, sense of community, etcetera. So, need to belong to a family, need to belong to a society, need to belong to a group, friend circle, whatever it is you know. So, basically it is about our need to connect with people. So, uh, this is a very important need. Uh, once we fulfill those love and belongingness needs, then we try to fulfill the next need which is called as esteem need. Esteem need is very uh, more psychological and uh, need basically uh, related to our self esteem sense of worthiness. So, it includes needs uh, related to accomplishment, prestige, getting respect, competence, freedom, these are all connected to esteem needs. So, we want to feel worthiness, you know, we want to feel that I, I have a worthy life, I have a respect. Uh, so, whatever you know we do in order to make our life worthy, uh, basically these are coming from the esteem needs. So, esteem needs again may have some internal aspect and uh, external aspect also. So, many most many ex esteem needs are fulfilled from the outside such as getting respect and prestige this is always given by someone else from the outside. Uh, and there can be an internal aspect of self esteem when you uh, have things like self respect which is about yourself, how do you feel, uh, feeling competent, feeling freedom, these are coming from inside of yourself. So, mostly this is, these are called as inner self esteem and outer self esteem is mostly when you uh, feel sense of worthiness uh, you know uh, from outside people. Uh, in terms of getting prestige, respect, etcetera. 
once we fulfill this esteem need uh, then at the end or the highest level of need that human being kind of pursues is called self actualization uh, which is a need for self development and growth it is about so self actualization is highest level of need according to maslow all the other needs are called as deficit need only self actualization is called as being need why it is called because all the other needs are uh, basically you know need all this need arises because of some deficit in the environment so if you are not getting food so the hunger arises uh, if there is an issue with the safety and security then need for safety arises so it always comes from the external circumstances or external aspect or environment some deficit in the external environment all this need arises however self actualization particularly is a need that is not connected to external uh, deficits it but it comes from within human being that there is an inherent motivation within all of us to grow and expand and you know uh, express all our hidden potentials so it is not something related to external world but it is it is there is an inner need for expressing our hidden potentials actualizing all our hidden potentials uh, or to grow and expand in our life so though that need is called as self actualization need and therefore it is called as being need because it, this need is the need for need of being or internal you uh, know internal need all the other need comes from the some deficits in the environment so we'll see uh, a little bit more about this concept of self actualization so uh, this is uh, briefly about what uh, the hi need hierarchy model of uh, abraham maslow so briefly let us uh, go through this uh, this needs again so physiological needs as we have already, already said it is the bottom of the pyramid and uh, these are most basic uh, physical requirement include need for food water sleep our survival depends on the fulfillment of these physiological needs as we have already said these are most fundamental and basic needs uh, safety needs is basically concerned with uh, when uh, physiological needs are taken care of uh, the need for safety comes into the play uh, it includes finding safe circumstances stability maybe financial security protection insurance etc uh this uh, need comes from the desire to have a control and order in life uh, desire and control in order of life present as well as future so uh, these are uh, all safety and security needs love and belonging needs needs uh, when uh, the other two needs are fulfilled physiological and safety needs are when largely taken care uh, this needs to uh, need starts to show up then people start to explore basically in terms of social uh, life in terms of getting connected uh, uh, with other people and uh, uh, they have a need for getting friends family children affectionate relationship sense of community etc esteem needs uh, as we said it is mostly uh, comes into the play when you uh, know physiological safety and love and belongingness needs are largely satisfied um uh, it is about you know uh, feelings of accomplishment prestige and respect uh, maslow talked about two versions of esteem needs a lower esteem needs which is also called as outer esteem needs and a higher esteem need which is also called as inner esteem needs so the lower or the outer esteem needs include respect from others because it comes from outside that is why it is called as outer esteem needs the need for status fame glory recognition attention reputation appreciation dignity dominance e all these things comes from the outside world therefore they are called as outer esteem needs the higher or the inner esteem needs includes need for self respect including such as confidence competence achievement mastery independence and freedom these are all things that uh, comes 
largely from within yourself. So, this part of esteem needs could be uh, you know kind of can be uh, you know included under being need also. Uh, so, be because it comes from within us to have a sense of self respect, uh, confidence, it is not de ex exclusively dependent on others reaction, but it is how you feel about yourself. So, uh, let us discuss now the concept of self actualization. So, at the very peak of Maslow's hierarchy of needs are basically self actualization need as we have uh, discussed earlier. Uh, this term was first used by another uh, 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 person named Kurt Goldstein. However, this was popularized by uh, Maslow. Maslow was not the first person to use this term self actualization. Goldstein uses this term first, uh, but uh, Maslow popularized this through his uh, theory. So, self actualization uh, needs are met when an individual engages in self development and personal growth. So, when you are focusing on your self development, your personal growth or hidden actualizing all the hidden potentials, then you are engaged in self actualization need fulfillment. Maslow said, what a man can be, he must be. That is the means, what is the meaning of this idea is that whatever potentials are there within a man, he must actualize that in order to become fully, uh, you know, uh, realize his all potential, in order to become fully what he is born to become. So, Maslow explained uh, referring to the need of people to have achieved their full potential as human being, that is self actualization. Maslow also said, uh, self actualization may loosely be described as the full use and exploitation of talents, whatever talents you have use them exploiting them is one important aspect, talents, capabilities and potentials that you have fully use them and exploring them is an important aspect of self actualization. Such people uh, seem to be fulfilling themselves and uh, be doing the best that they are capable of doing. So, they do best what they are capable of doing. Further, uh, the idea of self actualization is not a static thing that you know you suddenly achieve self actualization and this is the end and full stop. It does not work like that. Uh, it is an ongoing process and people keep on discovering themselves. So, this is a kind of ongoing process uh, in which one's capabilities are fully creatively and joyfully utilized and it keeps growing. Maslow very uh, interestingly said you know uh, in this paragraph uh, how he defined self actualization and it connotes this idea very beautifully. He said a musician must make music, an artist must paint, a poet must write if he is to be ultimately at peace with himself. What a man can be he must be. This need we may call self actualization. This tendency might be phrased as the desire to become more and more what one is to become everything that one is capable of becoming. So, he very beautifully summarized the idea of self actualization in this paragraph. So, according to them whatever potential you have whether you are a painter, you are an artist or you are a you know, mathematician, academician whatever it is or a carpenter whatever it is, if you have those potential you should express those potential to be at peace with yourself, to experience sense of well being. Uh, if you have certain potentials that has to be expressed and that is the way to achieve well being particularly eudynamic concept of well being. What you can be you should be, so that is the idea whatever the potential you have you should try to actualize those potential. Uh, this he called as self actualization. So, to become everything that one is capable of becoming. So, this is the, the highest level of need that human being should uh, proceed uh, to follow uh, in order to find a true sense of well being or to get in peace with oneself. So, uh, according to Maslow, self actualization need is a growth or being need. So, this is a kind of need to grow in life, to expand in life and it is a being need. So, because this need comes from within us, from the being. All the other needs as we have already discussed are deficit needs. Uh, the basic idea of this is that you know, 
all the other lower need arises from lack of or deficit of something from the environment whereas the need for self actualization don't come from any specific lack of something but the desire to grow as a person so it is this need is not coming from lack of something but it is a desire to grow and expand that is the meaning of self actualization uh, generally research shows what Ab abraham also kind of found found out is that people with self actualization need are more concerned with their growth and less concerned with the opinions of others they enjoy autonomy and are less susceptible to social pressure to fit in what he found if that you know by studying many people whom he concept uh, who whom he kind of you know uh, assumed that they have highly self actualized individuals in various fields you know he studied people biography of people you know who are, who have achieved highest potentials in their life such as albert einstein you know william james so he studied their biographies and found that the people who largely self actualized to large extent self actualized uh, are the people who follow their intrinsic desires and inner motivations uh, so they have a sense of autonomy so they are less influenced by outside pressure so if you are influenced too much by the outside pressures uh, you will not be able to get in touch with your self actualization need because you will be uh, you know running behind fulfilling outside pressures and need which may not be in sync with your self actualization need and uh, need so therefore such people he found are they have a very strong sense of autonomy and are less susceptible to social pressure to fit in so they are not so strongly desirous to just fit in the society and uh, do what all the other people are doing so they have this sense of autonomy this is what he found so according to maslow what is the obstacle in achieving uh, self actualization very few people actually reach the stage of self actualization very few people according to maslow you know ha very less number of people actually reach to the stage of self actualization and why this is the case so maslow said uh, the primary reason is that you know that each level of need must be taken care before the next one can be met so according to that we have so many other needs we need to fulfill those lower needs first before we can uh, actualize or we work towards self actualization so fulfilling one's physiological need is a prerequisite for safety needs being met one's safety need must be met before one's love and uh, need love needs are uh, taken priority and so on so like that you know you need to fulfill first uh, the basic needs in order to you know work towards the higher needs so this is the one of the major obstacle is that you know uh, self actualization is at the highest level meaning that it can only be fulfilled when one's physiological safety love and esteem needs are already met or to large extent they are fulfilled so most of the people are stuck in some of the lower needs either in the physiological needs safety needs or esteem needs or love and belongingness needs so we are most of the people are stuck in lower needs so that is why they are not able to work towards the highest need or self actualization need so the idea is that if you are stuck in fulfilling lower needs particularly physiological and safety needs uh, we will be spending all our time and energy at the at that level only without thinking about higher needs so it is it makes sense to some extent also because if you are continuously thinking about earning your bread only because somebody who is not able to earn his you know the basic requirements of life of uh, let's say you know having two meals uh, if somebody is not able to fulfill that how can you expect him to work towards self actualization so that is the idea that you know most of the people are stuck in their lower needs therefore they are not able to work towards self actualization so that is the obstacle however uh, later research shows that in many exceptional cases uh, this need hierarchy is not so rigid like you have to fulfill basic need first and then go to the higher needs uh, in many cases people uh, there can be flexibility in this order of needs uh, somebody without fulfilling lower needs can also work towards uh, higher needs for for example somebody risk his safety needs and physiological needs and uh, remaining hungry and uh, uh, you know even allowing the threat to his life somebody may work towards higher missions of life you know 
we have seen so many people who risk their life, who risk their basic physiological need and work towards some higher goals of achievement which may be related to so social welfare and other things. Uh, uh, so, in those cases we can see uh, they are neglecting their lower needs and uh, directly working towards their higher needs of self-actualization. So, it is possible in many cases, but maybe to a large extent people follow this order that they need to fulfill those basic needs in order to uh, work towards self-actualization, but there can be exceptions and flexibility in it also. So, this is the idea of self-actualization in the Maslow's theory. Now, we will talk about the idea of uh, self-actualization from another theory of humanistic psychology uh, called Carl Rogers theory. So, the self-actualization idea is very much inherent in the humanistic psychology. However, the conceptualization uh, could be little, little different from theory to th theory. Uh, for example, Carl Rogers uh, conceptualized self-actualization as little bit differently from what Maslow's conceptualization. So, according to Carl Rogers, you know, all organisms are motivated by a single force of life, uh, which he called as actualizing tendency. So, according to him, self-actualizing tendency is kind of um, fundamental motivation. It is a meta need. That is, you know, uh, meta needs means it is. It kinds of expresses itself in all the other needs. And it is a fundamental need uh, that is found among all organisms, not just human being. Even a plant is trying to self-actualize itself, trying to, even an, all animals are trying to self-actualize, not just human being. So, it is a, it, it is, it is a single force of life that is present among all organisms and he defined it as a built-in motivation present in every life form to develop its potential to the fullest extent possible. So, every in, organisms are trying to make best use of their life to actualize all their potential uh, to the full ex extent. This motivation is there among all of all the human organisms. So, in that sense, it is, he called it as a kind of basic fundamental meta need that is there in all organisms. So, Maslow kinds of look at self-actualization as at the topmost need. Uh, Rogers conceptualization is uh, a, is is little bit different in a sense that he conceptualize self actualization need as a basic need and all the other needs are an expression of this need actually for example you know what he said that all organism not only try to survive but strive to make best use of their existence so that making best use of your existence is self actualization need uh, this desire is due to actualizing tendency one may fail to do so despite this desire. This desire is there, but uh, one may not actually achieve that because of many obstacles. So, Rogers further said that, you know, he tried to capture and explain all other motives such as, you know, physiological needs of food, shelter, uh, you know, other needs like safety needs, need for love, self-esteem, etc. All these other needs are actually an expression of actualizing need itself. Why do you want food, why do you want shelter, why do you want love, why do you want esteem needs? It is primarily because you want to make best use of their life, to flower in your life. So, ultimately it is an expression of self-actualization need itself. So, using this meta need or motive to actualize tendency, we seek food, shelter, relationship, competence, etc. to make very best of our existence, which is actualizing tendency. So, the conceptualization is little different. According to Roger, self-actualization tendency is more fundamental and it is the single force in life present in all organisms and it is expressed when we seek or when we try to fulfill any other need also. So, it is an expression of all the needs. According to Rogers, uh, people however, in the course of actualizing their potential, everybody is trying to actualize their potential. However, in the process of that actualization, uh, we created society and culture, which itself is an expression of actually that act actualizing tendency, which itself has no problem. But in the long run, the society and culture, which we develop, it develops life of its own and many times it turn out 
out of sync with actualizing tendencies of many many people so we created society and culture initially as an expression of self actualizing tendency but in a long run this society and culture that external world that we have created uh, it uh, kinds of develop its own life with one own set of rules and regulations own sets of you know conditions and many time this structure social structure may not be in sync with actualizing tendency of many people who are part of this society and culture you know so we initially develop society and culture uh, to for actualizing tendency but in a long run uh, they develop their own life and may get out of sync with many people in terms of actualizing uh, self actualization need for self actualization this is where create certain obstacles and we'll see the process of that obstacle how it creates obstacle in actualizing tendencies so this societal conditioning uh, or outside uh, pressures and rules and regulations uh, they create some uh, rogers called something called as ideal self which is different from our actual or real self and this difference between real and actual self is causing uh, uh, causing a lot of problems in terms of psychological you know uh, in terms of psychological neurosis and other problems so basically it reduces your well being how it does let us see so rogers divided self concepts into two categories one is he called as ideal self and another he called as real self so we have two broad sense of self one is real self one is ideal self the ideal self is the person that one would like to be or i should what i should become and the real self is the person who you actually are in reality so this is the difference rogers focused on the idea that we need to achieve consistency between these two selves there has to be consistency between these two selves so the gap between this real self and the ideal self should be less to experience mental well being the inconsistencies between the real and the ideal self create sufferings and neurosis so rogers was a very uh, popular uh, psychotherapist and he could observe that many people uh, develop many psychological issues primarily because of this inconsistency between the real self and the ideal self how how it develops we'll see uh, a little bit in more detail the inconsistency is created especially when we form an ideal self based on societal conditionings that are out of sync with one's actualizing tendencies so this gap is created primarily by societal conditionings and especially when you try to fulfill certain societal conditions which are not in sync with your actualizing tendency you try to do something which is not intrinsic to your actualizing tendencies and you end up being an ideal self not the real self so let us see how this happens according to rogers so roger says you know the process is like this so actualization or actualizing tendency lead to something he called as organismic valley which leads to so organismic belling is basically ability to know what is good positive regard positive regard basically includes the idea of love affection etc positive regard leads to positive self regard
which is about self esteem positive self image this positive self regard ultimately leads to our real self now this is one pathways so if you follow our actualizing tendencies we will end up real in real self the actual self that we are at the core of ourselves so if you follow our actualizing tendency uh, we will have something called as you know we all have a sense of uh, something called as organismic valuing what is the meaning of organismic valuing is that every organism has a natural sense to understand what is good for them for example you know it is it can be very easily seen in animals that animals will eat only the right kind of things that is good for them so if you, you know, just you know put in any animals it could be cow or any other animals they will only choose the right kind of food that is that will nourish them so there is an th this is the idea called as organismic valuing means every organism knows what is good for them because it comes from their actualizing tendencies so they will be inclined to do things or choose things uh, which is naturally good for them so this natural sense is called as organismic valuing uh, now if while doing things in which are in touch with actualizing tendency and organismic valuing we get positive regard that is love and affection from other people uh, that there are no issues people accept us I I when we are doing things in touch with our self actualization tendency whatever we are doing uh, anything let's say you know i love to paint and i'm uh, doing painting and uh, you know uh, and proceeding in a career with painting and everybody accepts it around me and uh, give love and affection so if after following organismic valuing uh, i get positive regard from other people in terms of love and affection i will naturally end up having positive self regard so i will have good self esteem or i will have positive self image because i am getting love and affection from other people then naturally we will end up uh, our real self i will be happy with the way i am there will not be any issues and neuroses and uh, the conflicts in my mind uh, i am in touch with my actualizing tendency and i am expressing it and people are accepting it and therefore i am experiencing my real self the way i am uh, i am made up or whatever no intrinsically whatever is uh, uh, whatever i feel like expressing i am expressing that so you will end up having real self however what happens uh, maslow says in the process of this whole self actualization process we created society uh, that creates sometime problem so we created society which will kind of constantly interact with actualization tendencies society uh, which has its own rules and regulation own set of conditions and uh, you will be accepted when you follow certain rules certain uh, conditions so every society has their own set of rules so society has something called as conditions of worth which is constantly interacting with organismic valuing condition of worth means means basically means getting what we need when we fulfill fill societal conditions so to feel worthy we need to fulfill certain criteria only then we feel sense of worthiness when we live in a society or in a culture because there are many written and unwritten rules uh, which needs to be followed which needs to be which of which if you follow them then you will be accepted 
This condition of words leads to something called as conditional positive regard. So, conditional positive regard is basically uh, getting love and affection when you fulfill uh, certain conditions. So, uh, it is very simply means in, 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 in society when uh, we behave or when we function in a society, uh, there are so many conditions and criteria. For example, in a very simple example, uh, which is very uh, commonly can be seen in our societies, particularly in the Indian societies that every parents have their idea that you know certain professions their children should follow certain professions it could be medical or engineering uh, because it is accepted in the society that these professions are elite professions and every children should pursue those professions and if they get into those professions everybody in the society appreciates them give them love and affection parents become very happy they uh, give a lot of love and affection to their kids if they get into those uh, professions simply because it is accepted in the society these are elite uh, professions and you know uh, so many uh, people are forced to go into those directions uh, and uh, it may not be in touch with actualizing tendency of many students uh, they may not express or they may not intrinsically feel in tune with those kind of uh, careers or professions, but they are simply going towards it because of the pressures created by the society, because it is accepted in the society or kind of uh, there is an expectation that you know uh, these are more kind of elite professions and uh, if you go into that you will get more love, respect and affection. So, people kind of bend into those expectations and uh, bend to the demands of these expectations and many times choose those things and uh, in that process they neglect their actualizing tendency where they may be more better or in terms of actualizing tendency they may uh, be better at doing other things it could be creative things like music art whatever it is uh, but simply they are kind of getting disrupted from those actualizing tendencies simply because to fulfill those societal expectations so this is an example of conditional positive regard where you know uh, you get love and affection when you fulfill certain conditions. So, there are many written and unwritten rules which people pick up from the society. Uh, society basically includes your parents, your friends, your teachers, your peer groups, all are included in our society. So, all are creating many demands on us and when we neglect our actualizing tendency and fulfill those demands to get love and affection from others, then it is called as conditional positive regard. Now, this conditional positive regard uh, leads to conditional positive self regard. So, it is self regard, but it is conditional. So, then you also start accepting yourself or having a positive image only when others accept you or others give you love and affection. So, it becomes very conditional, you know, your self esteem becomes dependent on others uh, accepting you or giving you love and respect. So, it kind of become conditional in that sense. So, since this conditional positive regard is a very strong force, we all want to get love and affection from other people, particularly close people around us, that many time uh, we get we are forced to do many things which may not be in touch with actualizing tendencies. Uh, it may not be true for everybody, but in many cases this, this, may, this may be the case for many people. So, this conditional positive self regard ultimately leads to our ideal self. Self which is projected by outside forces and when we follow those projections, we end up having an ideal self a self which was expected by others or it is an ideal self or what I should be according to the others projection, I end up having an ideal self. So, this there can be gap between your actual self which you achieve when you follow your actualizing tendency and ideal self when you follow the external pressures and demands from the society and the culture 
then you end up having ideal self and the difference between them creates neurosis or mental instability or lack of well-being so this in incongruence between these two creates neurosis means instability emotional problems etc new neurosis so this is the process uh, that uh, roger said this is how uh, many times societal conditioning can create an obstacle in achieving our real self and uh, we end up having ideal self uh, which if the gap is very high between them then uh, we are bound to feel unstable uh, we are bound to have many emotional problems and there will be lack of well-being also so this is the process which rogers explained so according to rogers uh, how to promote this self actualization how can we promote this self actualization so rogers said in order to promote this self actualization uh, we need certain kind of environment an environment which provides these three important thing one is genuineness that openness and self disclosure you are able to experience genuinely what you, whatever you are you are able to express yourself there is an openness you are able to disclose yourself if an environment provides sense of genuineness and people are also accepting you then it, this is one important condition that will promote your self actualization or you will or help you to get in touch with self actualization second is unconditional positive regard and acceptance which is very important uh, if people in your environment gives you unconditional positive regard they accept you the way you are and they don't put too much conditions to be accepted you know they will not say like you know if you do this then only i will love you and and uh, accept you uh, if those conditions are less if you have more unconditional positive regard from other people around you it will help you to promote or get in touch with your self actualization tendency and you will achieve your real self in much more better way so if your environment provides unconditional positive regard and acceptance this is very uh, conducive for self actualization and the third is empathy if you empathy is basically if you experience being listened and understood by other people uh, if people show empathy around you uh, it will also promote self actualization and Roger said these are like nutrition for our mind you know so without these qualities which he called them psychological nutrition no these if these are present in our environment they will act like nutrition and promote our well being without this relationship and healthy personalities will not develop as they should much like a tree will not grow without sunlight and water so just for example for growing a tree we need sunlight and water for growing a human personality for their psychological growth these nutritions are required uh, genuineness unconditional positive regard and empathy so these are important for relationship also so if if in a relationship if people show this sense of genuineness they accept people the way they are and also uh, they are authentic not fake they show unconditional positive regard in the sense they may say okay this behavior was not good and uh, you should do like that advices are okay but and the core you accept the person as it is so that is the meaning of unconditional positive regard you may give advice but you accept the person so that is the meaning of unconditional positive regard and you have a sense of empathy that you understand try to listen to that per that person if this ingredient are there in your relationship also your relationship will also flourish so these are good for individual growth relationship and also these are important ingredient in psychological psychotherapies in a therapeutic situation where a therapist show this qualities you know uh, what rogers found that if this kind of environment is provided in a therapeutic situation many uh, clients who are suffering with emotional issues they automatically heal those things without really giving too much of technical you know uh, techniques and methods to come out of their suffering uh, this environment of loving environment itself heals lot of problems of the people so Uh, these are some of the ideas uh, uh, related to self actualization uh, we try to understand self actualization from roger uh, maslow's theory as well as carl rogers theory and we have discussed how what are the obstacles in it and how can we overcome that with this i will end today's lecture thank you